the stitch up the crisscross bands on it and hem it, but I wanted to show you what it's looking like. We did go ahead and order some more of the patterns. Since we're all out of the bundles now, those of you that got it, they started shipping yesterday. We'll be shipping them all throughout this week because we had a lot of orders. And uh, we went ahead and ordered more of the hard copy pattern by itself. So we have uh, a link in our online shop. You can always shop with us at craftygemini.com slash shop. That's our online shop and it'll be the first product that you see there if you're watching this live or the recording. And it's a, a Mary Mullari Designs crisscross reversible apron pattern. M my one is over there hanging in my kitchen, but uh, I wanted to show you the one that I demoed on on Friday just to give you an idea of it. And on the product page where you can purchase the pattern uh, by itself right now from our shop, uh, I have pictures of me wearing the one apron I made for myself both ways because it's reversible. So this is it. You can see the two uh, pockets right there. I have the crisscross bands pinned and this is how you would put it on over your head and kind of test out the bands to see if you need it shorter or longer based on your height, right? And then let me just flop it the other way so you can see. And then this is the reverse of it. So you just use two one yard cuts okay, of two different fabrics. They can be coordinating, or you can also use scraps, right, for the pockets and the bands and stuff, but super cute, comfy, crisscross. There's no ties. There's no buttons. There's no bands. A great gift item, so I know a lot of you got in on that Flash Sale Friday bundle, so thank you for that. We are shipping them all this week, and then, like I said, if you want to just get the pattern by itself, you can get it from our online shop. All right, so that was just an update on that because that's the last time I chatted with you all live. Let me check in here. I just want to make sure I don't have any specific questions for me uh, before I get started. So today we're going to be working on this headband. So it has a twist in the front. It's made up of two strips and it is a fabulous scrap buster for stretch knit fabrics. And I thought this would be a great one to do. One, because I need some more headbands. Two, because as soon as my husband saw it, he says he needs some too. Um, I wanted to make my daughter some from scraps that I use, or I should say from fabric that I use to make her some leggings. I had some scraps left over. That way she'll have a cute matching headband to go with it. And we're gonna talk about measurements and all this stuff, and I'm gonna do the demo here. Is everything good? Blotchy on Facebook. You know, I was watching a live the other day on Facebook. No? Okay, but now we're all good. Okay, awesome. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Chris from North Carolina. Carol says she loves the headband. It is awesome. And so I'm going to share with you some tips, right? Because when we work with stretchy fabrics, especially for something like this that needs to fit around your head, it's kind of like twofold. One, you have some wiggle room worked in because the fabric stretches. So you don't have to get like the measurement or you don't have to take, say you're making it for a gift. You don't have to get the circumference of their head necessarily, stuff like that because the fabric stretch is already for us. So we have kind of the wiggle room based on the fabric stretch, but based on also the fabric stretch, you might end up with something that fits too tight, okay? So I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial that I did years ago on this. So if you cannot watch the live or you wanna see a slowed down kind of edited version that's not live, we have the link for you in the description box on YouTube. We'll put the link in the Facebook chat as well for you. Um, and, and so you'll have access to that that you can watch after the fact, okay? But I say that because if you use a fabric that stretches a little bit and you still cut to the same dimensions that I'm about to give you, it might be too tight or based on the design or the print on the fabric, it might look super stretched, even though it fits, you might be stretching out, you know, some cute fabrics that have like little flowers and dots and stuff. You don't want it to be super stretched. So I have a couple different fabrics here that I'm gonna be working with and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the stretch and what I'm cutting them to based on who I'm making them for, okay? So let's see. Uh, let's see. Hi, EJ. She says, hi, Vanessa B and everyone. Tracy tuning in from Tennessee. Hi, friends. Uh, Vicky says you can put buttons on each side to connect to the masks with stretchy ties. And I've seen a lot of you doing this because I have a lot of different, um, headband tutorials. So they've been hand sewing buttons on the side here so that when you wear the mask and you have, if, if it's the mask that has the little elastic ties so that it doesn't put pressure on your ears, they're looping them over the buttons. So I've seen a lot of you doing that, uh, this year, especially. Okay. So yes, great. Uh, thanks for reminding me about that, Vicky, that I've seen people doing that. Okay, so scrap pieces. Let's talk about when I say it's a good scrap buster, how big do the scrap pieces have to be? So here I'm working with a cotton spandex fabric and typically, 
stretch fabrics are going to vary, right? Sometimes they stretch the same amount along the crosswise grain as they do on the lengthwise grain. Okay. And lengthwise, if you've ever been to a fabric store and purchased fabric, you know, when you tell them, say, I want a yard of fabric, the direction in which they measure that yard, that's the lengthwise grain. Okay. So lengthwise grain runs parallel to the selvage this way. Okay. The selvages run across the top usually. And most often we cut with the fold this way. So this direction is lengthwise grain. Now perpendicular to the selvage. So if you're looking at your fabric and the selvage is here, this way, making like a letter T to the selvage, that direction is your crosswise grain. And most often, especially on most of the cotton spandex or cotton lycra fabrics that you use, you'll see that it has the most amount of stretch in that direction. So if we're making a headband, we want the most amount of stretch or what we call dogs, the degree of greatest stretch going that way. Okay, because the straps are going this way around our circumference of our head. All right. So for my daughter here, I had a scrap piece that wasn't exactly, and let's switch to this view so that um, I can start talking about the fabrics here. B, let's go to this, um, the over the shoulder camera, please, so I can. Okay, great. All right. So I, uh, the strips that I typically cut for myself, okay, a grown up one, I cut it five inches by 20 inches. Now 20 inches, remember, it's cut along the crosswise grain. This way, I want this nice and stretchy. And so because stretch fabrics are gonna vary in the amount of stretch, I would say to start off with something that has at least 60 to 70% or more stretch in the crosswise grain, okay? So this is for me later. This is a cute double brush polyester spandex fabric that has a ton of stretch. Uh, great for loungewear, pants, shirts, all that kind of stuff. But some of you have purchased this fabric before, so you probably recognize it. If you cut, if you ordered it to make leggings, I know we're sold out of it now, but some of you probably made leggings or bobby t-shirts and stuff like that. If you have scraps, save them because it's a super cute one, I think, for the headband. All right, we good? All right, so then this one, I didn't quite have 20 inches, so we're going to try it out with 16. I will check back with you all and let you know if it was big enough for my daughter's head. But again, 5 inches wide, and then I did 16 inches long, okay? I think this is going to be plenty because there's a ton of stretch here. And when I say a ton of stretch, I'm saying like once it's made, I'll be able to stretch this multiple inches around the head. So for me, if it's like a work workout type of headband, I like them to be really tight because it's not a narrow tight, right? Like a piece of elastic tight on your skull. This is a wider, I mean, it's going to be halfway like this, wider band, okay, across your head. But I like it to be cinched up so it keeps all those little baby hairs out of my face when I'm working. So this is the one I'm going to work on for my daughter. And then for my husband, I know he has a bigger head than I do because I've knit him plenty of hats before. So I cut his to 21 inches. And again, five inches wide, but 21 this way along the crosswise grain. So you can see it's going to stretch a ton. And this is a cotton lycra, cotton spandex. We want to be using fabric that has some type of elasticity in it, meaning elastane, lycra, spandex, whatever it is, because that's going to give you a good stretch but it has a good bounce back. So when you stretch it to get it over your head, it's not just gonna droop off and start sliding down your head, right? It's gonna snug up to your skull. So we're gonna set those aside. This is double brushed, I said cotton spandex, and then this is a Robert Kaufman um, cotton spandex fabric, okay? Really great quality. Of course, because this has cotton in it, I would highly recommend, just as I would tell you for clothes, to pre-wash your fabric, okay? Um, if you don't care about it shrinking just a touch, you don't really have to, okay? But it's gonna shrink maybe one to 3%, and it's gonna shrink along the lengthwise grain most, mostly. So if you have enough stretch going this way, and you forgot to pre-wash it, or you need a quick gift or something, we all have been there, uh, it's just gonna shrink a teensy bit this way, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem there, okay? So Willow says this is great for Thanksgiving. Chris is loving the headband, so is Carol. Let me check down here. Uh, Vernia says, I'm watching on the TV and following the chat on the laptop. That sounds like a great setup. That way you can see everything that I'm doing. I'm going to grab my pins real quick. Let me grab one of my magnetic pin cushions. I think this one will work. Actually, let me grab this one. I have separate pin cushions for ballpoint pins. And this is something that if you're in my um, Helene Cardigan class and you purchase one of the kits, you got a little box of ballpoint pins, which is what I recommend you use when you're pinning together these uh, stretch fabrics. All right. So we're going to take one. And oh, here's a great tip. 
This is a striped fabric. Some of you may have purchased striped fabric in the past, but you're scared to use it on an actual garment because you don't want to have to deal with matching stripes. This is the perfect project to start with then because nobody's going to see it. Okay. If we switch to the, to the other view so they can see the headband I'm wearing B switch to the other camera for me, please. So I'll show you this one that I'm wearing is a striped fabric as well. Th there's nowhere where it joins or it seams or anything that you can see if the stripes match or not. You're just overall seeing that it has some stripes on it. So I think this is going to be a great fabric for you all to use striped fabrics in. Okay. So to try it out just to kind of build a little more confidence with the stretchy knits and matching those stripes. You won't even have to think about it for this project. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tamara says, can you give some estimate cuts of fabric to make this for toddlers and little girls? Well, this is going to be perfect. I will. Let's whip up this one first. And when I look at it, I'm going to be able to tell you if it's going to fit my daughter or not. So remember this one, we said five inches by 16 and I'll take a picture of it later on her so we can get a better idea. Um, and this is good because this is a cotton spandex. So most all cotton spandex, if they're a good designer quality brand are going to have about the same amount of stretch as this. Uh, let's see. Can you use clips? Karina's asking. Absolutely. So let me grab my clips. You can use clips. I'm not a huge fan of clips when I'm working with lighter weight fabrics because I feel like when I clip it, it's like the clip almost weighs more than the fabric. And so then I have like this weight hanging off the edge of my fabric. I don't want to deal with that. So for me, I do prefer pins here. Okay. But you can, if, if you like um, clips, you can do that too. All right. Tammy says, I've always wanted to try and wear those. You should try it. And if you're someone who's like kind of sensitive with having something here, you can always like increase the length and make them a little bit looser just so that they like are enough to like hold your hair back, but that it's not cinching too tight on your head. Now the one I'm wearing here, this is a scrap fabric that I use for the ribbing of my Charlie bomber jacket that I made, um, in previous years. And so I had a scrap left over. This stuff is, has great weight. It stretches really good. It has rayon, it has spandex in it and some polyester, but man, it's like perfect. I feel like it's not going nowhere. That's the kind of headband I like. All right, so let's switch to the other shot so we can set ourselves up here. Now for stretchy fabrics, I will recommend a polyester thread that you sew with because it's a synthetic, it's going to be stronger than man-made, especially if you're working with a fabric that maybe doesn't have enough stretch and you're going to be really stretching it on your head. You don't want those stitches to pop. Uh, for these instructional purposes, I have cotton thread on my, fat, on my uh, sewing machine. So don't do what I'm doing but use polyester thread so you don't run that risk. Okay. Let me um, grab a sip of my tea real quick. Okay. Let me just check in, see what other questions. Uh, Trisha says she had to go make coffee. <laughs> my husband made me a cup of tea. We all have to have our little drink here with us. Okay. So Tina says, can you give us a dimension for adults and children, please? So for adults, for me, I, I would say for my head, I cut five inches by 20 inches. And the 20 inches is what needs to be along the stretchiest dimension of your fabric. For my husband's head, I cut it five inches by 21. So just give yourself a little bit more there for a larger head or more hair. Also, if you have somebody that has a full, full head of hair, you know that it needs to go over that part too. So you make sure that you account for that. And then for kids, we're cutting this one or I cut it already five inches by 16. So once you have your two strips to whatever you decide to cut them at, you're going to fold them onto each other lengthwise like this, pretty sides touching. So I have my ballpoint pins here. And remember when you're working with lightweight jerseys, whether they're tissue weight knits or even like a regular cotton jersey, cotton spandex like this, you'll see that the fabric sometimes is going to want to, um, especially because I stretched it, I was showing you all the stretch. When you stretch the fabric, it tends to roll to the pretty side. So if the fabric rolls, the way that I do it is I kind of just roll with my fingers and scratch it up until it straightens out so that I match up my edges. That's a little pin. And then I match them up and then place my pin. So you see how this is like rolled under. You can slide your fingers under there and then scratch, scratch, scratch until the edges touch here. And if you have any questions that you see, you can let me know. Brand. All right. And then you don't have to, I mean, you can use as many pins or as few as you'd like. Truth be told, I often don't even pin. I just kind of manipulate it at the sewing machine. Okay. But I'm just showing y'all here. Let's do the other one. This is like the quickest, easiest scrap busting stretch knit project. You can make this out of uh, sweater knits, tissue weight knits, right? The weight of the fabric and the amount of stretch that it has and how opaque or translucent it is, is just going to 
you know, add a different style and look to your headband. So if you're working with a, a tissue knit fabric, something that's really thin and almost sheer, which happens to all of us, right? Sometimes we see a fabric online, we buy it thinking we need it for a top, and then you look at it and you're like, whoa, it's see-through. There's no way I'm going to make a garment out of this. This would be perfect because as you can see, we're going to sew here, so it's already going to be doubled up. So you're adding a little bit more body to it, even if it is a lightweight fabric. All right, so we have our two strips here. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now the stitch that you want to use, if you're making it looser, you can probably get away with a straight stitch if you're stretching the fabric a little as you go. What I would recommend, however, and that's just kind of a tip for those of you that have maybe vintage machines or straight stitch only, don't feel like you can't tackle this project. Just make sure that you use a polyester thread. Maybe give yourself a little bit more length in the fabric so it's not being stretched that tight to where you run this, uh, the risk of popping your stitches. But for those of us that have a zigzag machines, we are gonna set it to a stretch stitch. And a stretch stitch, you have a question? Yeah, go for it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If you have a serger, you will fly through this. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that, just showing how it is done. I mean, it would literally take two minutes. Okay, but yes, you can absolutely serge this end. So here, let me bring my sewing machine a little bit further in. On, I'm just gonna place this here. Hopefully not unplugging my machine. But on my machine, and I'm just gonna adjust the, um, the lens for y'all real quick, it's gonna be a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of bit manual, but I just wanna show it so that you all can see uh, what it would look like for you to look uh, on your sewing machine what the stitch is that I'm talking about. So when we say stretch stitch, you can look in your user manual, it will oftentimes say lightning stitch, stretch stitch, whatever it is. This is the one that you wanna look for. Something that looks like a slanted lightning bolt. Okay, so look in your user manual or if you have, you know, a machine that you can like flip the lid up and see all the designs or something like this, look for that, something like a narrow zigzag. If you don't have a narrow zigzag and you have like just a basic zigzag like this, but you can adjust uh, the stitch length and width, then I would recommend that you adjust the width maybe to like two millimeters and the length to like two or 2.5. Any questions? So two or 2.5 and then test it out on a little sample piece so you can see if that's narrow enough to play like a straight stitch. Because if you use a really wide one, when we flip it o or flip the, the strip out, it, it's, it's not gonna look like a straight seam. It, it has like the in and out of the zig and zag, if that makes any sense. But if you make that mistake, you'll see what I mean when it happens to you. So we're looking for a narrow zigzag, stretch stitch, uh, lightning bolt, whatever you want to call it or whatever your specific make and model uh, calls it, okay? So I'm going to uh, pick my thing. This is a zero 05, so this one, so five. So it sets the default settings on mine to one millimeter wide and 2.5 in length. We're gonna try it out on, at the beginning if I feel like the fabric is getting hung up, then I'm gonna um, adjust the settings on that, okay? Put this here. And this is the only part that I don't like about stretch stitches, y'all. They take forever to stitch out because instead of just going like a straight stitch, you have to wait for it to go in and out and in and out and super duper narrow and it's gonna take long, but it's not that long, but it does take long. All right, so. Oh my word, where's my speed thing? Clearly this thing is set to turtle mode. Okay, let's speed this sucker up. Much better. Remember, remove your pins. I got a question last week, somebody was saying, why do you remove your pins and not slow, uh, sew over them? I guess she said she was taught to just slow down and go over them. I rather not wing it because I rarely do anything slow, first of all, so it's really hard for me to slow down at any time. And then second of all, I do not want to run the risk of the needle coming down right on the metal shaft of my pin and having me mess up something in my machine. That's going to be a lot more expensive than me just making sure that I pull the pin before I get to it. So about a quarter of an inch. And then we just sit here and wait for this thing to stitch. So this is what I mean. So sometimes when I teach classes like on the stretch cardigan or the leggings, you know, I teach you different methods on how to sew it with a sewing machine and some people really wanna go in and use a stretch stitch and I just make sure I tell y'all, 
you can do it. Just know that it's going to take you twice or three times as long to sew the seams. So it just depends on what you're going for, okay? And how much time you have. <laughs> Hi, Tina. Thank you. She says, you're so talented. I love your videos. You're sweet. And, and uh, several of you I see are asking for me to do the tutorial on a serger. So I, that's a good idea. And it won't take me long to do. So I can work on that for y'all. All right. Okay. Almost to the end of this one, we're going to do this one strip. And then remember, we have the other one. So we got to go ahead and do that too. Just make sure that when you cut your strips, that you cut it with the length of the strip in the stretchiest dimension, because that's what needs to go around your head circumference. Okay. And because it's such a tight and narrow stitch, you don't have to backstitch. I get these questions a lot. Sometimes people are like, how come on this project you didn't backstitch and on that one you did? There's no way that these stitches are going to come apart, y'all. They're super tiny, super tight, and it's a zigzag. It's not going to come apart. And we know that backstitching is to help us secure the ends. This ain't going nowhere. Right, so there's one. Let me grab the other one. And let me see if I don't sew my fingers while I try to answer some questions since this does take a little while. Push this back, my tails. When you're starting off, if you, oh, uh, another tip. If you're sewing on lightweight, like cotton spandex like this, and you're, it's such a small, narrow stitch, I can see that it wants to eat it. So what I need to do is not start so close to the end and just come in about an eighth of an inch so that the feed dogs have more fabric to grab onto as the machine is stitching. Because remember, this is such a narrow stitch both widthwise and lengthwise, that it's almost like it's staying in the same spot because the fabric is stretching as it goes. But you can see on this machine, I didn't have to switch out to like a, a walking foot or anything. If you are not able to do what I'm doing here where I'm just feeding it through, uh, make sure that you check to see if in your accessory case you have a walking foot or maybe a built-in dual feed system, whatever it is. There's different options that you can help your machine uh, stitch through. But that's another reason I love my Jukies because even... This is like a $300, $350 machine in that price range without a lot of bells and whistles. But I'm telling you, I can sew thick stuff. I can quilt on this. I can sew denim. So it's a great little machine. And I got this one from so many things where I get all my jukies. You guys know I buy all my machines from them in Mount Dora, Florida. Question. Go for it. I did. So you can use a ballpoint jersey needle whenever you're working with fabrics that stretch and have cotton in them, right? Uh, another thing is for something like this, if you're just getting started with stretchy fabrics or you're just experimenting for the first time and maybe you don't yet sew a stretch knit garments, you can get away with a universal. This is not going to be a seam that's like on your bust line or on your hips or something where like if it uh, messes up, it's going to see like you're going to see it on your body. It's just a headband. So if you only have a universal needle, go ahead and use it. For this weight fabric, uh, I use usually an, a size 80-12 needle, and that tends to be like great for most light to medium weight fabrics. Um, I do have a universal needle on here, but I mean, excuse me, a ballpoint jersey, an 80-12 still, but um, like I said, you can get away with a, a universal one too. At least I'm, I'm saying that from experience from the different machines I've used. If you have a universal needle on here and you're working with a really lightweight knit, maybe like a double brushed poly spandex, and you see that you're getting skip stitches or you're having issues, then I would definitely stop and, and you know, get a ballpoint jersey needle and try that. Some machines, you know, you can get good stitch quality with one needle and some of them you have to have like specific ones in there. Okay. So you see, Wendy says, I've had the sewing needle break and hit my glasses. She was so lucky. She says, first time in my life, I was glad to be wearing glasses. Yeah, that's why I definitely do not like to sew over um, pins. Never, never. I mean, and you all know, if you've seen me sew, I sew super fast and I don't really slow down. So I don't want to run that risk. All right, let's see. Let me grab this. Okay, let me get the machine out the way. This last pin. Normally, I would recommend that you uh, press this. You can see that my fabric is rippling a little bit here. Couple reasons. This stitch is so narrow, y'all. So, so narrow. And I don't even know if this is in focus. It's actually out of focus. So let me. Okay, maybe that's better. Let me focus it here because I want y'all to see how 
tight these stitches are. Your stitches do not have to be this tight. Can you see how tiny that is? It's like there's more stitches than space in the fabric. So that's why it's kind of like bubbling a little bit. But if you use an iron and you just press that out, remember it's cotton. So you can see that once it's stretched, there's nothing. Okay, so just give it a press with your iron. For the sake of time, we're gonna leave it as is. Let me move this back a little bit. All right, I don't have my camera set to autofocus, y'all, so my apologies. All right, so now you can use like a bodkin or a safety pin or something. Because it's stretchy fabric, just pretend you're putting on pantyhose. And I just flip it with my hands. Okay. If you're working with a synthetic fabric, like if I was making this out of this double brushed poly spandex, I would not really hit it with the iron. So for the sake of time here, I'm not gonna do it with the iron either. But if you're working with a cotton spandex, of course, right? You can hit it with the hot iron. Okay, so there's one. And I've just aligned the little tube that we made so that the seam is running down the middle right here. Probably, you can, I think you can see that. There's a seam right there in that and that gray section of the fabric. That's one. Let's go ahead and repeat the steps to the next little tube. And remember, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on this already that you can watch if you can't finish watching the live or you're watching a recording, but you don't wanna watch it this long in real time. Okay, next one, same thing. And I would definitely press this if I was, if I had my iron all set up for y'all. Okay, so two like this, seam going down the middle. Now we're gonna make a big letter T. So I have this one with the seam facing up. I'm gonna take this one, the seam is still running down the middle, but I'm gonna do it face down, like a big letter T, okay? Now I'm gonna grab the raw ends here, bring that together, and then I'm gonna grab the raw ends here and bring that together. Easy, right? All right, so now I'm just gonna take a second to make sure that the seam that's running down the center, the idea of the seams and how I oriented them is so that they're on the inside and you're not seeing them on the exterior exposed side here of the headband. Although, because we have the twist there, you see a little bit of both. This is how it's gonna look. I love that. All right, let me grab some pins. Crafty Ferret Mama says, this is something that you can crank out 10 to 20 in a short amount of time, and if you need last minute gifts, this will be perfect. Absolutely, y'all know I am the number one fan of quick and practical gift type stuff. All right, so I'm putting these two ends together, matching up raw edges, and then also the center seam. And for this, it's a little bit heavier, so let's go ahead and put a clip for now. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Okay, now I'm gonna take this end where everything is lined up and bring it here. So Richard was asking, am I stretching the fabric as I sew? Because I used a lightning stitch and it's so tight and small, I really didn't have much room to grab and pull, so I didn't. But if you are sewing with a straight stitch, you do wanna stretch it as you go. That's gonna allow a little bit more room and elasticity in the straight stitch that doesn't have that built-in zigzaggy stretch. Yes, we have a question. A 8012 ballpoint jersey, Schmetz are the ones that I use. And I think we still have some in stock online. So you guys can, in the online shop, get them in a few different sizes, some assorted packs and stuff, the, the needles that I use and that I recommend. And one more needle question. Yep. Um, do you, have you can put ballpoint needles in sergers, yes. I would check your user manual. Some machines require certain needles, but the Juki sergers that I use, I put in the same Schmetz ballpoint jersey needles um, in the serger when I'm using that. For something like this, I will say, <coughs> excuse me, I will say that because it's just a headband, I would set up your serger, if you know how to use one already, to a three thread. I wouldn't do a four thread because it's just gonna be additional bulk, an additional line of straight stitches. It's gonna make the seam allowance quite bulky and you don't need that, it's just a headband. So if you're gonna do it on your serger, I would recommend a three thread um, serger setup. So you'll only need, you know, there's one line of stitching, or one needle I should say that's doing the straight row of stitching, okay? All right, let's see. Wow, we have a lot of comments coming in here. Uh, that was a great question, yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the question is, should you use different needles with different fabrics? Absolutely, and if you watch my videos or my courses and you sign up for them, I always tell you what needle I recommend for that specific project. So it's something that you also, um, you build up that knowledge over time, right? as you work with stuff, but it also, I mean, I know people that will use like 
8012 Universal on every single thing they sew, garments, quilts, everything, and it works fine for them because of their sewing machine for some reason, right? Some sewing machines are a little bit more um, fidgety than others, okay? Thank you, Patty. She says, show Vanessa the love with a like. That's right. If you are on Facebook, I would love it if you gave this a share so your other crafty friends can check it out and join us here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for Whip Wednesday and then Friday nights at 7 for Flash Sale Fridays or Friday Chats. And if you're on YouTube, definitely give me a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do that. All right, so I brought all four ends together. So you should have four raw ends, okay? Try to match them up as best as you can. They'll tend to move a little bit on you, um, but you can put pins, you can put clips, whatever you want. Yeah, a quick question, go. The last fold, oh lordy, let me see. <laughs> it's a big letter T with those seams that are running inside facing each other. So I'll set it all up. We have a tube. I have the seam running horizontally down the middle this way lengthwise. I have the other one set up the same way. The seam is going this way. So I leave one like this. The other one I'm going to take and flip it. I want that seam touching the other seam in a big letter T. Okay? Then take the one that's underneath so that it can sandwich this one to create the knot. Raw edges touching here. I'll put a little clip just so it doesn't move. And then these two raw edges got to come this way, right? So that it can hug the other strip right here to make the twist. So let's straighten everything out. And then I'll put these two together. So the key is that when they're folded, you don't see a seam here. And this guy, you don't see a seam here. The seam should be on the inside of each loop as we fold them. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. But remember, we have a link to the step-by-step -step tutorial where I go over all this as well. So I have those two ready to go. Now I need to bring them together. So put them all together, okay? And I'm gonna put two clips, I think, just so I can try and maintain these edges as close as possible. Now, in my video tutorial, I think I say a quarter of an inch. Some of you are gonna have trouble sewing at a quarter of an inch. I'm such a quilter. Everything is like quarter inch, just sew a quarter inch. It's like you barely need any fabric, just stitch right on the edge. But I know not all of you are quilters or are comfortable sewing through this much fabric at such a narrow seam allowance. So what you can do is just set your sewing machine to the center needle position, which on most models is gonna be 3 8 of an inch, which is just a little bit more, but that eighth inch more usually will give you uh, more fabric so that the feed dogs have more to hold on to, and then just go nice and slow. I'm gonna stitch here. So I just, um, let me get off the straight uh, stretch stitch. For this, this is too bulky for such a narrow stretch stitch. So for this, I would recommend that you go just to a basic straight stitch, okay? Let me set my machine up to that. That's that down to one. And then the stitch length, if your machine defaults to like a two millimeter or 2.5, it's still gonna be too narrow. This is too much bulk, okay? You might be able to get away with it if you're using a super, super lightweight knit, but even this cotton spandex, you have two layers, two layers, two layers, two layers. So this is eight, okay? Eight layers right here. So you want to lengthen that stitch length just a hair to help the machine feed the bulkiness through, okay? Um, and again, I still just have a ballpoint jersey needle 8012 is the size, even though this is a really bulky seam. I don't want you to have to, you know, change out to a bigger needle just to sew this literal couple of inches. All right, so I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to, let's go to three millimeters just to get through it. And we are going to sew two, two seams here just to reinforce it. So here I am going to backstitch a little bit if I can. Okay, just a stitch or two is fine. Needle down. And you know what? I'm too far over. Let me see what the setting was on the stitch width. Let me, I'm going to trim this off real quick just so I can pop out these couple stitches. I need my, uh, this is like a 5 8 inch seam. I don't want it to take up that much. I want it just at around 3 8 Especially since this is the shorter one that I'm not even too sure it's gonna fit my daughter because I cut it only at 16 inches long. I don't wanna make it smaller. But this is another thing that I'll say since we're talking about like cutting it to different sizes for toddlers and stuff. You know, you can always make it shorter once you make it because I'll show you how we finish it off. And I know some of you are not gonna like it because it's raw edge, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so, oh duh, because I set it to the, the stitch one on my machine sets it to the left needle position. That's not what I want. I want zero, zero stitch. There we go. Now we're in the center. All right, so 
take a couple stitches. You have a question? Okay. I'm just making sure I have fabric on my feed dogs. And some machines will have this little black thing that you can press in, like if you level out the foot for the bulk, and then pop that in so that it locks it in that higher up um, stitching position. I don't think I really need it here because it's not that bulky, but like for sewing over denim seams and stuff like that, that's an option that you can use. Make sure I stop with the needle down. Um, that's right, I changed the stitch, so I need to lengthen again to 3.0. There we go. And I'm just going nice and slow, remember. And you can already see this machine is stitching through all this bulk. I am digging in here because I want to make sure I have all four of these layers. You don't want to be stitching through all this bulk with these little stitches and then see that you only had two layers caught or three, right? So this last one under here, I see it. And there. Just double check. It's a little seam, but it'll cause you problems if you miss it. All right, and then I'm getting to the end, so I'm just going to backstitch. So I'll take this out and then we're going to stitch on another line of straight stitches. That way, if for any reason, which you won't because this is not getting stretched that this way, right where the stitches will pop, it's being stretched this way. So it's going to hold a lot stronger. So I'm just going to stitch another row of stitching to the right of this seam. Okay. And then we trim away the excess because we're working with stretch knit fabrics. It doesn't fray. And this raw edge obviously is not going to be on the outside of your project. This is going to be on the inside. Now I know some people don't like to finish this raw edge. I'm all about the quick projects. And as long as it does not affect, you know, the integrity of the finished project or the headband, this is how I do it. I will share with you another tip in a second. Let me grab some sharp scissors. So I have two rows of stitching here. I'm going to take my scissors and trim super close to that last row of stitching. So it's like right, right on the edge. Okay. Then, and I hope that this isn't, this isn't focus. Yeah, I think. Now I'm going to come in here to the center of the band. Oh, this is going to be a toddler size. I mean, it might fit my daughter. We'll see. But you can see, then we just leave these edges raw, but we have two lines of stitching. So it's nice and reinforced. And when then you flip it, this is what you, oh, not bad. I almost matched the stripes, y'all. <laughs> They're kind of matching though, but pretend. This is gonna be behind your head, nobody's gonna see it, even if you, you, you mismatch them. That worked out pretty good. And then there's the headband. Isn't that cute? Oh, I, have, I made my daughter some uh, Clara leggings with the same fabric, with a cute little t-shirt and the matching headband. What? Styling. She's gonna love it. All right, so then on the back, remember, this is what you see on the outside of the headband. On the inside, you have this. If it doesn't fit you super tight, that's not gonna bother you. For me, I like mine super tight and I find that it still does not bother me because I have hair back there, you know, so it's almost like another layer of cushion. But if you did not want to have this little seam there, what you could do is add an extra like inch to the length of the strip. When you stitch it here, give yourself a bigger seam allowance and then open the seam allowance this way, okay, and top stitch on either side. So you'll uh, even out that bulk by halving it and then top stitching it so it'll fit flatter, okay? You'll still have a raw edge on the ends of wherever you stitch it, but that is another option to not have this little seam if you don't want to, and then you just kind of have a wider seam allowance to work with so that you can top stitch from the right side, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I will, um, and they want a surgery tutorial. I need to take notes because I will not remember 30 minutes from now after I eat lunch. All right, let's see. <clears throat> So Patricia's asking, could you have finished that on the serger? You can. The thing with the serger is, remember, it's a bulkier seam, and you got to make sure that you match, right? Otherwise, I mean, it might not affect you too. I prefer the way that this looks to having a raw edge of a serger stitch right there. But say you're using white fabric, or maybe you make a solid navy one and you use navy thread on the serger, that would look perfect because it will blend in really nicely. So it's just up to you. A lot of these things is just a matter of personal preference, you know? If I take off mine... You can see, so this one, y'all, I think this would be, so this was 16 inches, the strip that I cut, five inches by 16, and I think this is gonna be a good size for like five to eight years old. That's what I would say, of a cotton spandex fabric, because it has a lot of stretch, but you don't want it to be super tight on a little girl's head. My daughter's kind of picky too. So this, um, I'm gonna try it on her and see if it fits her. If it doesn't, then I think I'm gonna bump up to 18 inches in the length for her strip, but this is super cute, either way right? You can put a couple of these together, make a little zip pouch, throw in a lip gloss, boom, gift, done. 
All right, let's see. Other questions here. Um, what length would you cut the fabric for a ponytail holder? For this size, oh, you'll have to play around with that with the stretch. I have a tutorial on how to make a scrunchie uh, on my YouTube channel. If you look up how to make a scrunchie, Crafty Gemini, if you just do a search like that, you'll find it on YouTube. And um, I share some tips there and information on length and sizes and stuff. So you might want to check that out with elastic in it um, to see, you know, if you can use that for what you want to do. All right. So, yeah, I do have a scrunchie tutorial. So y'all can find that there. Tina Sherwood is asking, what sort of cotton do you use for stretch fabric? Can you switch to um, the other camera thing here? Not since I'm answering questions. I just want to make sure. Girl, my hair look a hot mess. Okay. But yo, this, I love it. I love my little headband. Can you see how nice and snug it is? Not super stretch. I mean, it's not tight, you know, but it just feels like, that's what I like to say, like snatch back. Okay. Answering the questions, let's see. What type of, what was the question? I just missed it. She was asking, what type of cotton do you use for stretch fabric? So I'm working with a cotton that has spandex in it. Uh, you'll either need to, if you're going to a fabric store and shopping, you'll need to look at the end of the bolt and see what the fiber content is. It'll tell you, it'll say 100% cotton. So here's the thing. There is a fabric and I'm trying to see if I have any. I don't have any here because I rarely use it because it sucks. It doesn't have spandex in it and it won't bounce back to its shape. But it's called cotton interlock. And it will be like in the area of stretch fabrics. You'll grab it and it comes in so many gorgeous colors and prints and you stretch and you're like, oh, it stretches, it's perfect. But when you look at the bolt end, it just says 100% cotton. Means it doesn't have any spandex, like or elastane. These are all kind of the same things, but trademark name and generic name and then overseas they call it elastane. It doesn't have anything that's going to allow it to stretch and bounce back. So that fabric, although you grab it and it stretches, when you stretch it, it stays stretched out. You don't want that for a headband because like when you first put it on, say you're going to the gym, you put it on, 30 minutes later, by the time you're moving and sweating and stuff, you'll see it start to just like slide off because it's stretching as you're wearing it, but it's not snapping back to your head. So make sure that you look at the fiber content. You want to see spandex, lycra, elastane one of those in there so you know you have that bounce back okay that stretch return so this when i say cotton this is 95 percent cotton and five percent spandex this is a robert kaufman the designer quality knit okay this is really great stuff we're all sold out of this stuff i think right now but it's great for t-shirts for my westchester dolman top for the clara leggings we use it for a bunch of stuff okay so yes you want to make sure it has some type of a spandex in it Okay, to give you that stretch. So although it's cotton, it's not 100% cotton because it has the elasticity in it with the spandex fiber. All right, uh, the measure of my strips. Remember, we have a full tutorial below. Uh, this strip for the little kid one, I cut out at five inches wide by 16 inches long. The adult ones, I cut all of mine five inches by 20. And then for my husband, I got to make him one of these because, you know, for all his farm chores and stuff, he has locks that are like down to here. So this really helps having a headband. And for his, I cut them five inches by 21. Okay. So anywhere in that range, if you have a fabric that has a really good stretch to it, don't worry too much about the length. Just start off with five inches by 20 and go for it. Uh, okay. Lisa's asking, which model Juki is that? A friend is looking for a new machine at an affordable price point. This is the Juki LB5020. The cheapest price right now you're going to find is at so many things.com. And that's where I buy all my Jukis from. Um, I think it's like right at $300. They're selling it. And I think it includes free shipping in the U S so check it out. So many things.com. And then under sewing machines, you can check out LB5020 bomb bomb i'm super happy with it i'm glad i got it for these little whip wednesdays just to have it right here i am in the process of working on a uh, video review of this machine super great and you can see it's lightweight i mean i'm kind of strong you know what i'm saying but it's still lightweight it's a great travel machine and as you can see easier for me to just pop up on the table for these whip wednesdays and flash sale friday demos so not a lot of bells and whistles, but just enough, you know, to, to be able to work and grow with the machine. If you're trying to find a machine for somebody who's just starting or you need a quick travel machine, highly recommend. All right. Uh, okay. 
So Heather's asking any news about new courses, the Clammy Ruler Bag Club. Girl, you're all up on my stuff. I know I'm busy working on all of those things. We are going to be doing a Clammy Ruler Quilt Club. So if you're not subscribed to my email newsletter, make sure that you head over to craftygemini.com and click on email sign up because that is the way that you're going to find out about sale prices and get in early, right? At the early bird sale price. Um, the next course, some of you have been asking, I think I've mentioned this before in another live chat, but... We did a poll a while back where I showed you like four different Jolly patterns. The winner, drum roll, is the Jean PJ set. This is the next upcoming sewing course. Um, you know, we did the cardigan one this summer, then we did the leggings course. This is going to be my next online um, sewing course. We have the patterns right now in stock. You know that by the time I launch the course, they tend to sell out. So if you think you're gonna sign up for this course, make sure that you get your pattern. We will have kits for it. We're trying to get ahead of everything right now before we get ready to introduce the course and launch it and all that. But it is a pajama set that includes 28 sizes. You can make it for kids. So boys and girls, because there's no actual like shaping in it, you know, it's just a long sleeve tee with some ribbing and then the pants, the elastic waistband pajama pants, and then also women's sizes. So you can make it in a kid's size two, and this one goes up to a woman's size 24. So, this is gonna be an awesome class to sign up for, especially if you're like just getting into garment sewing because you're gonna make a top and a bottom. So there's gonna be so much content for me to cover that I think it's really gonna be like an awesome bang for your buck, okay? But this is the pattern. We have it for sale in the online shop at craftygemini.com shop. It's the Jean, J-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, PJ set pattern. And that's gonna be the next online course. So thank you to everybody who gave me their answer in those previous live chats. That was the winner by far of the polls that we've been doing. <laughs> All right. So, oh, Amanda's asking, where can I ask you questions if they don't get answered here? So, because I'm not able to catch all of them, you can always email us at bea at craftygemini.com if you have a question. If one of my customer service team members can't answer it, then they will forward it to me. Usually if it has something to do with a specific pet. You have a question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just email it to me and, and I will get back to you on that. Okay. Heather says, I'm going to sign up for that quilt club the moment I get the email. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And actually, Heather, you're going to be in for a treat because when I get to talking more about that, I have a bunch of samples of clammy ruler quilts to share. So I'm uh, super excited about that. We're going to be busy working on all this stuff. The club, the bag club is also in the works. Um, it's coming this fall. So everything is like super close and right around the corner. So save your pennies so you can join us for some super fun classes and clubs. And then I will see you all on Friday for Flash Sale Friday. So 7 p.m. Friday right here on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page and the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. So, so you can join us for some super fun classes stuff, and clubs. The, club, the bag and club is also in the works on Friday for um, Flash Sale Friday.